Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. The Book of Daniel, Chapter 4 Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit that the beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. 
This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, Praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our friend, our provider, our sustainer, our Savior, and our Lord. I trust that you had a wonderful day and that you're having a restful night as well. God has been good to us in bringing us almost to the end of another year. Let us give him praise and thanks and as we gather once again to hear the word of God. May we hear him speaking to us. May we hear his voice and feel his touch of power. Today we are focusing on Daniel chapter 4, and I'm reading now Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible declares, This matter is by the decree of the watchers, the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest or the humblest of men. Today's message is entitled, Invisible Watchers. Invisible Watchers. Let us pray, Father in heaven, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. All we're asking is that you will speak to us individually through your word and may your name be honored and glorified for Christ's sake. Amen. Friend of mine, Daniel chapter 4 is a unique chapter in the Bible because it is the personal 
testimony of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The chapter describes a dream he had, the interpretation of the dream by Daniel, and the events that followed. Daniel chapter 4 opens with Nebuchadnezzar acknowledging God, acknowledging God's greatness and narrating the troubling dream he had. In the dream, he sees a large, strong tree that reaches the heavens and that provides shade and shelter for the animals and the birds. However, a watcher, a watcher, a being from heaven descends and commands that the tree be cut down, leaving only the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass. The dream also foretells that the heart of the man will be changed to that of a beast, and he will live with the animals for seven periods of time or for seven years. Disturbed by the dream, Nebuchadnezzar calls all his wise men to interpret it. But none of the wise men could explain the dream except Daniel, who is known for interpreting dreams. Daniel is troubled when he understands the meaning, but eventually explains the meaning of the dream to the king. He tells Nebuchadnezzar that the great tree represents the king himself. The cutting down of the tree symbolizes that Nebuchadnezzar will be humbled by God, losing his mind and living like a wild animal for seven years. The stump, however, being left in the ground, means that King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom will eventually be restored once he acknowledges the sovereignty of God over all kingdoms. Twelve months later, Nebuchadnezzar is walking on the roof of his palace, boasting about his own greatness and power. At that moment, a voice from heaven declares that the judgment foretold in the dream will now take place. Nebuchadnezzar immediately loses his sanity, lives like a wild animal for seven years. After seven years, Nebuchadnezzar's sanity is restored. When he acknowledges the sovereignty of God, his kingdom is also restored to him and he becomes even greater than before. He concludes his testimony in Daniel chapter 4 by praising God's power and God's ability to humble the proud. Today's message is entitled, Invisible Eyes. Invisible Eyes, what are we talking about? The question today is, what are we talking about by invisible eyes? The Bible mentions the phrase, the watchers, the watchers, in Daniel chapter 4. The question today is, who were the watchers in Daniel chapter 4 and who announced God's judgment against him on account of his pride? The watchers, invisible eyes. When King Nebuchadnezzar was relating the dream to Daniel, in Daniel chapter 4, verse 13, the king said that the watchers came down from heaven. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 13 says, Nebuchadnezzar speaking says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, a watcher, and an holy one came down from heaven. It is said that the plural term watchers, it is said that the plural term watchers in Daniel chapter 4 verse 17 presupposes the existence of a heavenly council or assembly. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Job chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. The watchers, the heavenly council or assembly, observing the affairs on earth. Nebuchadnezzar, by his conduct, did not take into account that there were heavenly, invisible, watchers observing his conduct 
And you know, even today, some high officials and government officials, and many of us are not taking that into account, that they are heavenly beings watching us, observing us, observing our conduct, whether good or bad. However, ladies and gentlemen, when King Nebuchadnezzar received his sentence of seven years of humbling mental imbalance, the word from God in Daniel chapter 4 verse 17 was, This matter, this judgment upon you, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand, the judgment by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High God ruleth in the kingdom of men, and that he giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest or the humblest of men. Nebuchadnezzar did not take into account the watchers observing his kingdom, observing him, and how he was managing his kingdom, and how he was relating to power and authority. My favorite Bible commentator says, and I quote, If we were to cherish an habitual impression that God sees and hears all that we do and say and keeps a faithful record of our words and actions and that we must meet it all in the judgment, we would fear to sin. Let the young ever remember that wherever they are and whatever they do, they are in the presence of God. No part of our conduct escapes his observation. We cannot hide our ways from the Most High. Human laws, though sometimes severe, are often transgressed without detection and hence with impunity. But not so with the law of God. The deepest midnight is no cover for the guilty one. He may think himself alone, but to every deed there is an unseen witness, invisible eyes. The very motives of our hearts are open to divine inspection. Every act, every word, every thought is as distinctly marked as though there were only one person in the whole world. You and me, and the attention of heaven were centered upon that one person. End of quote. No wonder the word of God declares in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The word beholding in that text is better translated keeping watch. The eyes of the Lord are keeping watch. The eyes of the Lord are keeping watch in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, sometimes, sometimes children are given the impression that God watches them in order to find some cause for blame and for punishment. But we must also remember that God, our Heavenly Father, watches with pitiful, loving eye. We must remember that our Heavenly Father watches with the pitiful, loving eyes of one who knows the frailty of our human nature. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, Psalm 33 verse 17, Psalm 90 verse 8, Psalm 103 verse 13 and verse 14. Yes, friend of mine, God sees the evil and the good. God sees the honest and just employer, the good, and God also sees the dishonest employer who robs his workers and customers, the evil. God sees the loving husband who is faithful to his wife and who takes care of his family, the good. And God also sees that unfaithful husband who abuses his family and neglects them. God sees the evil and the good. God knows the sincere believer who is endeavoring by the grace of God to serve him faithfully, the good. But he also knows the one who is deliberately 
hypocritical, trying to hold on to this world, the flesh and the devil, while pretending to serve God. God sees the evil and the good. Oh, friend of mine, Jesus also sees our future, our positive future when others just see our present and sometimes our negative circumstances. He sees our positive traits of character as well. You remember the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 47 to 50, the Bible says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of Nathanael, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile, there is no deceit. That is what Jesus said of Nathanael. Nathanael said in John chapter 1 verse 48, How do you know me? How do you know me? And Jesus answered Nathanael and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. I saw you. I was watching you from a distance. Nathanael was startled to find that his life lay like an open book before Jesus. He was startled to know that even though he did not see Jesus, in the distance or anywhere, the Lord knew him. Nathanael responded to the words of Jesus, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. If you could read me like that, you must be a divine person. And the Bible says, then Jesus told him in John chapter 1 and verse 50, Jesus said to Nathanael, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Jesus was referring to the many convincing evidences of his divinity that Nathaniel, that Nathaniel would be privileged to witness during his association with Jesus Christ. Friend of mine, people just saw a man, Nathaniel, sitting under a fig tree. But Jesus, like the heavenly watchers, saw an honest man who will be blessed. Oh, friend of mine, Jesus knows us by name and nature. And the heavenly watchers also know us as well. Yes, heavenly beings are watching us from a distance. May God help that when they look upon us, they will see a commendable character like that of Nathaniel's and not the character deserving of divine punishment like what King Nebuchadnezzar displayed in Daniel chapter 4. And the good news is that whatever God asks us to do, he stands by to give us the power to do it. God is able to keep us from falling. God is able to help us to live right. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, friend of mine, may God help us each day to be like Jesus so that when the heavenly watchers observe us, they will say of us, they will say of you and me, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. May God bless you real good. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us that you're watching us, but you're watching, hoping, and empowering us that we would live for you and represent you here below. Bless that boy, that girl, that man who put aside the time to hear your word, that woman who put aside the time to hear your word. Remember those who have made prayer requests. We praise you on behalf of those whose prayers you have answered. And Father, as we lift up the other prayer requests before you, Lord, may they see answers to their petitions. And may we all serve you faithfully until we see you face to face. These and other mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day and a restful night. God bless you.